All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 15 and 15. We're here most days at noon to talk about teaching and learning. And today I'm going to toss it over to my colleague, Hannah Hounsell. That's me, although I do still have a last name purgatory. Uh, <laughs> I need to change all of my last name stuff. It's OK, Robin, I just noticed on Zoom it says Hounsell. I got married, so I'm still working on it. Um, Hey everyone, so uh, my 15 and 15, I wanted to talk about this um, kind of little silly tech tool um, that uh, I discovered in a grad course. So um, it was a course about tech and we did a lot of exploration of tools and um, hopefully everybody is kind of seeing my screen. I made this little handout about, um, it's called Wakelet. And um, I just think that it might be like a cool thing for people to feel like they can add to their toolbox. Um, and so I wanted, I thought 15 minutes would be a perfect kind of opportunity to go over the basics of it and just kind of show everybody like what you can do with it. Um, I don't know if anybody ever used, I think it was called Storify, um, which was pretty popular, I think. Um, in classrooms because it was it was kind of a tool where people could curate digital um, resources together in like a visual way. Wakelet, I think, is like Storify, but a little bit better and kind of works even smoother. Um, so it's also kind of a digital curation tool. It's it's not groundbreaking. I will say that <laughs> that much, but it is kind of fun and it is it does change um, the way maybe that you can present resources or information again in kind of like a highly visual way. Um, so I'm going to hop over to an, a couple of examples that I kind of picked out um, the wakelet, you know, wakelet.com. They have like a popular page where they've kind of um, uh, they kind of showcase ways that people use wakelet in an interesting way. And it is very often used in the classroom. So one of the links that I have on my handout is just a link to that popular page. And I really recommend just kind of perusing like what people have done with it because there's some really cool stuff um, kind of up there. But I uh, figured that I'd take everybody kind of through a tour of like what some folks have done with Wakelet. Um, and just kind of leave you with some ideas and also a link to one that I made that is completely blank that you can kind of play in if you'd like. Um, but this one is uh, one where I think the teacher assigned like a, a learning log um, for students to do. So something at the end of a chapter, a unit, um, or even a final project, like a portfolio type thing um, that kind of like revives, I think, like the traditional like reflection that we maybe assign students um, and you know text based stuff it kind of gets tired um, sometimes it's nice to um, revive that assignment a little bit so this is kind of a way that someone has uh, used wakelet to kind of revive that so um, people are able to add you know text so they can write they can add text they can reference um, you know other resources um, and then they have the ability to add uh, content from other areas of um, the web. So this one is like a picture that someone pulled from somewhere. If you click on it, um, it brings you to like the full size of it. Um, you can link YouTube videos. So if you click on that, it brings you to the actual YouTube video. Um, and you can pull it up in Wakelet as well lots of YouTube on this one. You can put articles, you can put tweets. Um, this is not loading for some reason. There's just uh, kind of no end to the type of content that you can put on and it just makes it, it, it automatically puts it in a nice, like visually interesting way. Um, and one really cool thing too is that it uh, plays with um, LMSs. It, you are able to embed um, Wakelet into other locations. So I know that Canvas isn't always super friendly when it comes to creating visually interesting, um, you know, content lessons, etc. So if you were interested in kind of uh, presenting 
information in a different way, Wakelet could be a possibility for that. And you can just embed um, your Wakelet onto an LMS. So I have linked on the handout as well how to do that. Apparently, that was it. Uh, <laughs> just YouTubes, just YouTubes and uh, text. But um, there's a lot more that you can do with it. This is an example of someone who kind of, it might have been a student um, you know, putting together a wakelet for like a topic of weather and climate. It might have been a, a teacher who put something together. But um, this is kind of a, an example of like a colorful, visually interesting, um, like topic resource that uh, someone put together with wakelet. You can change the background. Um, you can put all these sorts of, you know, interesting uh, that's the word I'm looking for infographics, but also you know, a, a video that you might want students to watch, um, definitions, you know, it continues on. It's just an interesting way to kind of view information. Um, and I think for students especially, it might be a great way to kind of marry their knowledge of like, uh, like social media because it looks very much like a social media, um, what's it called? My words aren't coming to me today. Feed. Feed. Thank you. Looks like a social media feed um, and they are kind of used to that format of information. It might be like an interesting way for them to be able to present information in a way that feels more native to to them. I will say it, there are students that that also might not feel natural to. So it's definitely um, worth asking before you kind of assign something like this about like who your students are. What skills does this play to? What skills are they actually building? Um, if they use Wakelet, any, all of those kind of questions are important to ask yourself before you use any sort of digital tool. And you'll see on my handout, I have a few questions to kind of frame your use of this tool, but also tools beyond Wakelet as well. Um, another kind of interesting example that I found is kind of like an like information about an author. So, you know, students might read a text from an author. Um, and this might be a great way for them to put together, you know, they have tweets from the author, they have um, information about their, their books, they have a, a YouTube video, more tweets, etc. Um, and then the last kind of tab I have is the popular on Wakelet, which was a, what I was talking about before too. And they have a really good search function as well. So there might even be a topic up there that, um, already exists. So if you wanted to look for a topic in a course or um, you wanted to see what other people have kind of done, that's a way to do it right there. Um, I wanted to kind of show everybody what Wakelet looks like on the back end um, when you go to kind of use it. So um, technically this is, and um, hopefully I still have it in my um, paste here. Um, technically, this is open for folks to use. I will say that I haven't practiced the collaboration aspect of it in um, a little bit. So if it looks really complicated, we obviously don't have time to kind of uh, um, work out the kinks uh, techno technologically in, in the seven minutes that I have left. But um, it might, I think the last time I used it, it was as simple as kind of clicking that link uh, maybe logging on with your Google account. You might have even been able to use it as a guest. Um, but I do have that invite link there. So if we can make that work, feel free to kind of play with it. But if it doesn't work, no big deal. It's a tall ask in 15 minutes. But I did want to show everybody kind of what the back end looks like and what sorts of things you can do. Um, so first things first, it kind of reminds me of Padlet in a lot of ways because um, in this top left hand corner, you can kind of uh, change the design layout of it so you can decide how the um, information is presented, whether it's in a media layout, um, a grid, a mood board. Um, I think there's a lot of really interesting potential with the mood board, especially in, you know, the, the humanities. Um, a mood board assignment is kind of a fun way for students to, you know, maybe have a, a an icebreaker or a, a quick introduction to a topic or something like that. And you can also add a cover image and a background image. I won't do that right now because who knows what I have as 
pictures when I click add a cover of an image. <laughs> um, but you can kind of play with that a little bit there. And then when you actually go ahead and um, make one of these, you can obviously title it whatever you want. Um, and you can also create a descriptions. So that might be a way to, you know, present, you know, the purpose of your wakelet, um, a little su summary of the topic. Um, students, obviously, if they're using this for an assignment can do that as well. And then you choose the different type of um, content that you want to add, whether it's text, image, um, we can talk about bookmarks really quickly in a second, PDF, and then any kind of web address here. So the beautiful thing about that is you can literally add anything from anywhere. Um, it's just that sometimes Wakelet plays better with um, some sites um, than others. So like, for example, YouTube, it will show like a nice title photo, um, you know, thumb, thumb drive or thumbnail photo. That's what I'm uh, that's what I'm looking for um, from YouTube. Um, but if you choose something from like a, you know, article in some obscure website, it might not look as visually pretty. Um, so that's just something to kind of see um, when you paste, it'll show you like exactly what it's going to look like on the wakelet. But you can literally put any web address and it will link to it. And usually it'll link it in a nice visually interesting way. Um, ooh. That's not what I meant to do. And uh, the other kind of fun thing is um, Wakelet is collaborative. Um, so it might be a good way for students to do a group project. Um, it might be a good way if you can figure out the collaborative aspect of it, um, play with it a little bit more. It might be a good way for uh, students to put together something at the you know last 15 minutes of a class to kind of summarize what they learned or what remaining questions that they have. Um, yeah, so, so the fact that it's collaborative is really is really wonderful. And that means that there's a lot of opportunities there with um, having interesting collaborative assignments. Um, the last thing I'll kind of leave you all with is just some ideas that kind of came to mind um, as I was playing with this tool. Um, I've already kind of talked about like the putting together a unit summary or a study guide or a reflection or learning log. Um, I think it might be really interesting to kind of uh, revive the annotated bibliography a little bit because you can link um, any kind of resource on here. And so it might be an interesting way to revive that assignment a little bit um, because students can still write their little blurb. They can link to the um, resource and maybe they can have like a little bit more uh, fun with that assignment um, than is traditional with an annotated bibliography. I think it would also be great for um, students who are curating a list of resources um, for like an upcoming project or paper. And uh, one other thing is um, its ability to grab tweets is a really interesting um, function as well. So I think there's some opportunity there for you know, students to curate tweets from a hashtag for a current event or um, maybe a conference that is related to their field of study or, or a topic that is being studied. And then in the world of like English and creative writing, I think there's really some interesting stuff here with creative pieces that are uh, more multimedia and kind of interactive. Um, so I think that's where I'll end it. I'm happy to answer any questions and I really encourage people to kind of uh, explore it and see what you can find because it's kind of a fun tool to play with. And let me just clarify a couple things from the chat. Um, so you can use it for free and your students can use it for free. You can look at like if you use it for teaching, your students don't need to make an account in order to look at what you're looking at. But if you want students to make wakelets, they need to make a free account. They can use either their Google account, their Facebook, they can use an email or you can use Microsoft. So I just tried, um, Microsoft will actually bring you to your USNH, you know, PSU login. And I tried to use it and it got all buggy. So you, you'd have to try that on your own when, when we have more time, because I'm not sure if it was just glitchy right now or if it actually doesn't work, but it may actually be possible that 
just like you can use a lot of tools by signing in through your Google account, that you could actually sign in through your Plymouth Microsoft account, and it takes you to your Plymouth login page. So I think it will work. It just um, didn't for me right there. But I'm also using Firefox, which is, um, you know, kind of a unpopular browser. So you can see that Alyssa said she was able to use her PSU account. The reason I like that with students is it's just one less kind of, you know, um, non-formal teaching account that they have to use. So it, it should work fine. Um, I'm just testing it out right now. So I, I think the share link that I had was maybe a broken one. Again, I was kind of playing with things a little bit. I did put another share link in there that I'm kind of curious might work instead. So if people have like, you know, five extra minutes after they get off uh, here, they can kind of see if that works. But um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording um, and dismiss you all. But if you want to stay and ask any questions, you're free to. Um, you can also uh, book appointments with um, Hannah if you want, like, you know, 15 minutes or something where she just helps you. Um, or, of course, me and Martha um, anytime if, if we can assist. But I've used this with students and it really is a great tool. I always love playing with tech with people.